Let's take a quick look at some of the new Vary Audio 3 functionality found within Cubase Pro 10. The design intention was to make existing features more obvious yet easier to access with some enhanced functionality. To start doing Vary Audio, we want to double click on a monophonic audio file such as our voice and we can see it appear in our sample editor. If you don't see it appear initially, just make sure that the Vary Audio tab is selected and that you clicked on the Vary Audio Edit button. So once we see this, we could see our segments, and this is analyze the pitch and rhythm of our vocal file to make it appear much like a MIDI key editor. We have different coloring modes as well. So we could have it automatically generated based on the event color, in this case, orange, based on pitch, or based upon the chord track. So with the chord track labeled here, the green notes indicate that that note falls within the chord, a blue note within the scale, and a red note out of key. So if we wanted to listen quickly to some of our vocal. That was okay. so long, I was so naive. And let's say I wanted a little more detail to edit on a bigger area than the lower zone. We could click on this particular arrow here pointing up to the right and now we could edit in an independent floating window. So if we wanted to zoom in and out, we could just kind of take a look at it. Now, now one of the changes, one of the biggest fundamental changes is the default pitch snap mode. It used to be that as we grabbed the center of a particular note that it would automatically move that note and we would see it be exactly the same amount out of tune, but we would move it one semitone up or down in pitch. So as we wanted to do this, the default mode is changed to absolute. So now I could just grab a note and it's gonna snap to the tuning center just that easily. Now, some people may also want to have it set to off so you could freely place the pitch of notes where you want it to. So if you're doing different tuning temperaments, we could do that very easily. But if you're in absolute or relative mode, you could hold down the shift key and be able to drag. Now, many people constantly would do editing by selecting events and then going over to selecting quantize pitch and straighten curve constantly throughout their tuning process. And this isn't the most ergonomic design. So we wanted to incorporate some new smart controls. So as we zoom in here, what we could do is see our different smart controls. So we see four that are labeled here, one on the side center edges and one on the top and on the bottom. So if I wanted to select a range of notes instead of having to slide over to the inspector, if I wanted to quantize the pitch, I could just grab the bottom handle here and just quantize just by moving that up or down. If you still want to go to the old style, you could do that as well, but much faster to now just select this. And if I wanted to adjust the curve or like adjust the vibrato of particular notes, I could just come here and go to the top center edge. Now at times you may want to do particular types of edits where you may want to split notes. So instead of having to go to toggle between different edit modes, we could just go to the bottom and the icon will just turn directly into a scissor. If I wanted to join those notes together, to simply go to that same area where I just split and it'll turn into a glue tool so that we could again have one segment. If we wanted to adjust some of the parameters based just on the edge, so let's say if I wanted this note to be longer, I could grab this and I could just warp that note and increase the length of it. So we could listen to it now. And again, if I wanted to just snap that directly to it, very simple. Now, if I hold down, so I could warp by grabbing the center edges to change the rhythmic values of different notes. If I feel that the segment hasn't been calculated correctly, I could hold down the Alt or Option key 
And now I could just adjust and readjust the size of the particular segment. So we've seen our smart controls have been added, and these are the default modes, but I would probably prefer to use the show all of the smart controls. So now as we do this, we see additional modes that have come on each corner in this little diamond in the upper center. So if I wanted this note to pitch upward, I could just grab my square here in the upper right hand corner and I could adjust the pitch of that note. If I hold down the alt or option key, we could tilt the notes. So and if I want to do it on the opposite end, just grab that particular square, the upper corner square and hold down alt or option to tilt. Now, sometimes we may want to be very careful with transitions between different notes. So if we're going to straighten the curve, we may not want it to be affected coming out of a particular note. So we see these triangles here, and this will allow us to set the range of the curve. So if I don't want to affect like the transition as I wanted to do my straightening of the curve, we could do that without affecting what's before this curve, this triangle, or after that triangle. If we wanted to do particular pitch shifting, but only on at while setting an anchor point, we can now come here and move the diamond where we will. And if I wanted to adjust Bye. the pitch directly there, I could just set that diamond as my anchor point Bye. to adjust pitch up or down and saying it won't affect past this point or it won't affect earlier than this point. So as we wanted to do some more editing, I've got to What's my let's say this word is a little too loud or a little too soft. What I could do is go to the lower right hand corner and now we could adjust the volume on a word by word basis. So if I wanted this, or if I wanted this to be louder, So the right bottom corner handle will allow us to adjust the volume. And another feature that people wanted was the ability to adjust the formants. And that's what the left bottom corner handle will allow you to do. So if you've adjusted the pitch of different components and you want to shift the formants, we could do that very easily. So if you wanted to take an entire section, let's say the chorus here, I could select that entire range and just snap it directly to being in pitch. And if I wanted that segment here to be joined together, again, just go to the edge and glue it. Now, sometimes we may want to see like a reference track and I'll just change my event colors here. So if I wanted to select a, a MIDI track, I can now see that particular reference track here. So if I wanted to adjust just the warping to say, okay, this note needs to last directly to here. This note is this long. This note needs to start right here, et cetera. We can adjust and see our MIDI part as a reference. So if we listen to our next part here. Something So let's say if I wanted to select this part of the chorus and we'll just select all of these notes here. And again, let's just snap it to be in tune. And we see that our MIDI note is longer here. We'll listen to this particular phrase. So and now I could just kind of grab that and we just change the rhythmic value. So very easy and very transparent. Now, if I wanted to take a particular note and just play it from uh, my MIDI keyboard, I could activate MIDI input and just play. Just, 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 just. Just that easily. Now, some of the powerful things were, were allowing you to take your different components and turn that into 
extracting your audio and turning it into MIDI information. So let's say we've straightened the curve, we've adjusted format. We have additional functions that we could find here. One is the ability to extract all of the different tuning curves and have that convey very accurately in MIDI with our notes and note expression tuning curve. So if we wanted something to be kind of a hyper accurate representation in MIDI of audio, we could do that. We also now have the ability to individually reset pitch changes to pitch curve, the shift changes for this, the format shift, the volume and warp changes. So as you can see with the new user interface designs, editing your vocals is incredibly fast and powerful. If you have found this video helpful, please feel free to like the video and to subscribe to the channel.